Hello cookbook friends and welcome. We're gonna be looking through a Middle Eastern pantry, essential ingredients for classic and contemporary recipes. This is a cool one because this does go through everything by actual ingredient, which is interesting. There's not a lot of cookbooks that do it. There's some, but not a ton. So here's what it looks like. It is very visual, very fun. I love the, I love the photography. It really is beautiful. So we have a lot of basics in here as well that they go over, but just an explanation of where some of these recipes come from. It spans all across the Middle East, which is very cool. Uh, we have some contemporary recipes, some traditional ones that you might be familiar with. This is what the uh, chapters are, how they are organized. So they're kind of the building blocks to the recipes. In the beginning, we start with basics like shawarmas, different spice blends, that kind of thing, even how to make your own. So here are examples of how to use those spice blends. So we have Dukkha roasted root vegetables. Here we have a white coffee. So now we go into condiments. So that's the same thing. We have building blocks, an explanation of what each condiment is, what the essentials are, but then how to use them in each uh, or in dishes, which is really fun. So let's look through some of our mains here, how we do this. Oh, cucumber pickles. Ooh, those look beautiful. All right. So we have an olives chapter. It explains like the origins, the history, which is really cool. If you want to have a really engaging cookbook and learn something new, then this is the way to go. I also like how they've just, there's so many things. So we have like a production of olive oil, sourcing, storing, appearance, and flavor. And there's so many different kinds of olives generally and different ways of curing them. So they go over all of them. And we have recipe ideas over here. Very cool. Okay, so here we have an olive and citrus salad. You can see on the very top here, it says where this recipe comes from, uh, like what this can go well with when, the texture and the flavor profile as well. Here are our ingredients. And then over here, we have our directions. So very cool. Here we have olive spread. Oh man. I love olive spreads. It's like a new thing for me. Here we have storage directions. So that's really helpful if you do make a whole batch, especially for somebody like myself, and you're the only one eating it, then you can know how to store that. Uh, olive oil confit vegetables, beautiful. So let's move on. We have a muhamara. This looks stunning. It's like a wild, it almost looks like a wild, oh, it's toasted walnuts and red peppers. This is a baklava. Look at that assembly too. It's so stunning. Sesame as the ingredient. And then we talk about it and then the building blocks. So tahini is something that a lot of Middle Eastern and Mediterranean dishes will use. Actually, lots of dishes will use tahini. Um, so here we have making your own sesame oil, halva, sesame seeds, using all parts of everything, which is awesome. And then how to use those parts in a dish. So this is called Sini. Uh, and it says is the name that, or wait, Sini Ya. And it says Sini is the name that I've always known for the metal or clay pan used to bake Sini Ya. The dish is made with lamb, beef, or vegetables, sometimes a layer of bulgur, wheat, and topped with tahini sauce. Some think it's a casserole, some are like, no, it's kind of like a shepherd's pie. So we have the, this is inspired by Gazan Fisherman's version. It looks beautiful and tasty. Here we have some landscapes. This is a Zurich Pavla Palau. Sorry, this is a Persian barberry rice. That's what I probably should have said. It looks beautiful. This is a braised stuffed apricot and date. Yum. Pomegranate molasses. You could, there's a whole molasses chapter. Spiced salon carrots. That looks beautiful. And a lot of these recipes are actually very approachable from what I've gathered. So it does talk about like, um, there are some ingredients that might be a little more difficult to get, but you can get them, most of these in Amazon, find substitutes pretty, pretty easily. Um, Cause like this one is like cornstarch, whole milk, rose water and sugar so easy peasy rose legume 
Uh, it is a popular confection in the region. Ooh, it's uh, similar. Uh, you may know it as Turkish Delight. So honey as an ingredient. Here's some different recipes. Lokma with honey saffron syrup. That sounds so, those look like little mini donuts. Here's tabbouli. Toasted friki and vermicelli with eggplant. Wow. Legumes. We have hummus, obviously. That's a big one. Mujadara. Beautiful. We have a dairy section as well. Sheesh Barak with yogurt sauce. That looks really good. Uh, Mansaf. That's like a lamb stew. Uh, wow. Meat and fish section. So uh, not for vegetarian friendly. Look at this. This is a DIY Basturma, which is, I've never, so it's a, it's a spice blend, but it's a beef eye round. Um, so that's, and you can use that all in different things like Basturma eggs. And then you can use it here in the Sujuk Pide, Pide or Pide. It's in here too. They're so cute. They're like little, uh, I, oh my goodness, I can't even remember what they're called anymore. Like little pizza rolls or something. So cute. Dumplings, that's the word. Salt cod and green olive stew. So there's a lot of cool recipes in here. And I've been wanting to do more Middle Eastern cooking myself. And this is a great way to start, I think. This is a Middle Eastern pantry. We do have a lot of different Middle Eastern cookbooks, different playlists. So give those a go if you're looking for something different. Um, and make sure to comment, follow, check out our socials, which is down in the description down below. We have Facebook, Instagram, that sort of thing. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned and let us know what cookbook you want us to go through next time.